Clarence Darrow was a famous lawyer who lived from 1857 to 1938. Darrow did not believe in God, but he had a personal friend who was a minister. One day, as the two were walking and talking, Darrow surprised the minister when he asked, Would you like to know what my favorite Bible verse is? When the preacher, taken somewhat by surprise, said that he would, the attorney replied, It's Luke 5.5, 5, the statement that says, We have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. In spite of my success, he continued, That verse seems to sum up the way that I feel about life. Once again, the statement that Clarence Darrow said summed up the way he felt about life. He said, He felt like we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Friends, what an admission from one who does not believe in God. Bob Barnhill of Lubbock, Texas, related this incident from the life of Darrow in a short article and then added an observation. He said no matter what one does in life, no matter what position he may reach or what possessions he might come to have, if he leaves God out, the time will come when life will rise up to mock him with the word, nothing. Now the famous sermon that the Apostle Paul preached on Mars Hill that we're considering this week calls attention to man's need to know God. A noted denominational preacher a few years ago said man is incurably religious. And how true that is. Indeed, man is incurably religious. So inherent and so intense is his need for God that if not blessed with a knowledge of the true God, he inevitably will invent one or more gods to himself. And this is what the Greeks of old did. The city of Athens was filled with temples and shrines and monuments and altars to all sorts of false gods and goddesses. Acts 17 and verse 16 tells us that the spirit of the Apostle Paul was stirred within him when he saw that the city was wholly or completely given to idolatry. The Romans also had their false deities, and the student of the Old Testament quickly recalls the idolatry of the Canaanite nations, their devotion to Baal and Ashtaroth and, and many more. Such false gods, whether of the past or present, exist only in the lifeless images that the worshippers make and in the superstitions and imaginations of blinded minds. When the Apostle Paul was permitted to speak one day in the Areopagus, or Mars Hill, he began in this fashion, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed, and behold your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. The men of Athens had erected many shrines and altars to their plurality of gods and goddesses. Then, perhaps out of fear that they may have overlooked one, they had built an altar to the unknown God. Perhaps they hoped that if a god had been accidentally left out, that this particular altar would help appease his wrath. Well, indeed, they had left out a god. They had omitted in their religion the one true and living god, the only one that mattered. The altar with this inscription, To the Unknown God, proved to be the perfect starting point for the Apostle's Sermon on God. And that God-centered sermon that is recorded in Acts 17, 22-31, is a reminder of God's need to know of God. Man is incurably religious, and as the French infidel Voltaire, Voltaire reportedly said, if there were no God, then it would be necessary to invent him. The only trouble is that whenever man sets out to invent a God, he comes up short. He comes up with something far inferior to himself because he himself is the creator of that God. Well, consequently, it is no God at all. It is, not, it is not disturbing to realize that there are more mothers in the world either telling their children there is no God or teaching them devotion to a false God than there are mothers teaching children about the one true God. And while man needs to know of God, he also needs to know about God and even go a step further by knowing God, uh, by, knowing God by having a personal relationship with Him. And these needs we're going to see in our next two lessons as we consider Paul's sermon on Mars Hill. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today. 
and have a blessed day.